Welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another video, which will be filled with many a mark on a paper, which the world likes to call art sometimes. Illustrations, doodles, I don't know, semantics. More specifically, what I want to do is just draw with some pen. It's a great way to kind of just get ideas on paper and not focus too much on perfection. And sometimes I can get very bogged down on that, <laughs> even though it might not look like it sometimes. So what I thought we could do today is uh, talk about pen sketching, some things I've learned over the time period in which I have sketched with pens. And uh, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll have a little fun. Either way, roll the flying waffle. <laughs> now there are many different pens out there. My personal favorite for like drawing or sketching are like basically the cheapest pen you can find. One you know you get from the bank. One that's hiding under your bed probably right now. Just those like really simple. This one specifically which is my favorite is the Bic Round Stick Grip in purple. You can kind of see there's nothing fancy about this except that it's purple but it doesn't have to be. Purple. What I like about these is they do dry very quickly, which I will demonstrate right now. Basically, if I start drawing with it, oh, sorry, it's brand new. I grabbed a brand new one so that it wouldn't be chewed up. You're welcome. But what I like about these is just how quickly they dry. So you'll see as I draw it, there isn't really any ink sitting there on the top. So I can draw to draw very quickly. And I don't have to worry about like my hand smudging on top of it. In very humid days, I think I have actually seen it smudge just a smidge, but you know, nobody's perfect. And these pens are pretty darn close. I used to sketch a lot with this guy. This is the Papermate Profile 1.4. Bold pen. This one is more of a gel pen, so it's a bit smudgier, but I do like having this on hand because you can get much thicker lines. And in conjunction with this one, you can usually make the lines that were drawn with this one kind of fade into the background when you add in the bolder and <laughs> the bolder thicker line afterwards, but sometimes it can smudge. So it's just something to kind of be wary of. Of, but uh, clearly uh, I remember incorrectly. Or maybe the weather's nice. A pen you may have seen me mention over the course of uh, the growth of this channel, at least in the last year, is this guy. This came in a Zen Pop box and I've been loving it, especially for like bullet journaling. Um, the Pentel Energel. <laughs> in the size 05 and uh, I'd been using it so much I worried about using it up so I recently discovered that you can just buy them at the store so that's what they would normally look like and uh, here's the packaging actually I have it right here it says it's quick drying ink but apparently I am quicker because I have managed to smudge this as well I really like drawing quickly I like getting ideas on paper and then moving on to another one that's just kind of how my brain likes to function so the quicker the drying pen the better otherwise I should just use a pencil although I smudge pencil pencil is way easier to smudge. So I do like a pen. That's another thing that's cool about pens is when you're drawing in your sketchbook, it doesn't smudge. When you start drawing over here and the pages are rubbing together. So your sketch will last longer and look better over time. But I'll, I'll, I'll sketch a little with this too so you can see. Yeah, see there, smudge. It's not super obvious, but I had it where I did like the line art on the face and then went like this to get rid of some, you know, those eraser shavings and I completely ruined the character's face. Again, on a much more humid day than today, but I also really recommend these. They're apparently liquid gel ink and I really like how consistent they are. Like you don't really have to worry about it like spotting. So yeah, really great for like bullet journaling. So yeah, that's one of my go-to pens. There's no, you don't have to have any of these specific pens but just the knowledge of how quickly a pen dries, I think is good to have in the little noggin. Now I'm going to be using this guy because he's my favorite for pen sketching. As for any sort of techniques, I'd recommend doing it basically the same way you'd probably sketch with a pencil, but try and draw even lighter if possible. I always recommend learning to sketch with pen because it isn't very forgiving at the beginning. So you kind of have to learn to draw lightly or uh, you're not gonna be able to find really really good lines if you don't. So you can kind of see like right now I'm sketching extremely lightly. And this wasn't really meant to be a tutorial. I kind of just want to share some tips, but you can see I'm writing very lightly, being very soft with the wrist. And if you're someone who does get very heavy handed, I would recommend taking a little time to sketch with pen and see just how lightly you can draw with it. Cause if you see, this is like lightly. And then if I push as hard as I can, you can see the difference. I would say it is quite significant. So what it really helps you learn to do is just draw 
so lightly. And like if you draw the wrong line, you kind of just ignore it and start building up the lines you liked better. And as you slowly build up and thicken lines, the little mistakes will fade further and further into the background. It's really, really cool and creates a fun texture, which is another reason I love drawing with pen. We should do some kind of hair. Do, should we? Should we? One second. <laughs> Leg first. Pen of wood. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but drawing with pen has also kind of taught me uh, not to create too many like, I don't know, skeleton structures. I focus more on like the physical shapes of things and like breaking it down. So like this arm is just like a rectangle and like using references when you're learning to sketch with pen is also extremely handy because you will have to break down those shapes. I can't think of like an interesting hairstyle. <laughs> Maybe something like this. A little curve at the end. Maybe space punts. There we go, a little Sailor Moon action. Cinnamon rolls, that's what they look like. And like, as you like the lines, you can darken them up. Like, I can go lock in these eyebrows, the lips too. And even if I didn't like that hair, I could probably completely change it and not be too concerned about it showing through. Another cool thing is just kind of go around the outside and darken those lines. That'll just kind of like force a little line variation and make your sketch a little more interesting. You can also, because the pen does have so much variety, you can kind of slowly make it darker and darker. You can use that kind of color in some areas. So pen is just like really versatile and I don't think most people really realize how versatile it is. I know if I haven't drawn in a while, I do get more heavy handed. So it's a good idea to kind of pull out the pen because it just makes it so much more obvious that that is what is happening. You can see I can get a lot of line variation with that. Whereas like this pen, I don't think I can get quite as much. I can get a lighter line and a thicker line. Well, yeah, I guess it works, but this is a different color and it's thicker line is because this is a 0.5, I think. Doesn't say, but we know this is a 1.4. I'm gonna give her a vest with a cut off sleeves. <laughs> Collar be a good place, I think, to add a little tone, make it pop. So I'm gonna push a little harder and just kinda add some hatching there, all going in the same direction. Cause I think that just looks cool. Maybe some jewelry, squiggle, <laughs> squiggle, maybe a choke or two. Now we're kinda losing these. They lined up right with the vest. That's called a tangent, my friends. I can also add a little like shading under some of these. So I'm kinda just taking into consideration the lines I like, ignoring the ones I don't, darkening them up. Same way I would do like line art. Do a skinny jean with a ripped edge. Huh? Interesting. Maybe some uh, holy knees. Oh, holy knees. Some line variation to make it look like there's a little distance between it and the kneecap. Add a little shading under this. Now I have been drawing with pen for a while, so don't be upset if you're having a little trouble. It's all about kind of practicing it and figuring out what works best for you. And trust me, you'll get it with time. I think the biggest lesson it does teach you though is just being able to be a lot lighter with your wrists. I know the lighter I am with my wrists, usually the better the art turns out, <laughs> just in general. It's gonna help you in more things than just drawing with pen. I will like little hangy bits texture on the edge there too. And let's do like some converse, not converse, docs. I have a really hard time drawing these usually, so we will take our little time here. I'll just build up the shapes, darkening the lines that you're more sure of, being very light when you're unsure. See how like I'm taking it pretty slowly and not rushing into anything. That's usually when it starts to suffer Melissa's now and there's the only area with like the most tone is the shirt and the hair i would like to make the boots pretty dark so i'm just gonna add a light tone first see if i like it don't need to make it too dark if i don't need to you know what'd be kind of cool like stars like she drew on them with sharpie <gasps> that's cool i like it maybe one that's not filled in some smaller ones i like she was just sitting there in class and started drawing on herself although then they'd be upside down they'd be more like that so I don't know if that's a good example, if you can see like how much some of these lines have kind of become almost non-existent. Another fun thing to do, if you have like any kind of alcohol-based markers, is to kind of add like a super light wash. You can use actually just like a colorless blender, like this one, and it's going to kind of break down the pigment of the ink. So this one specifically kind of turns pink. See, isn't that fun? So you can kind of get some cool like hue shifts if you use that, kind of throw it in around wherever. I kind of want to go over the pants just to make them pop a little, but this obviously is not a requirement. It's just kind of a little pizzazz at the end. For the most part, it's not going to do much except where it goes over the purple lines. 
hair too, why not? There's a lot more there, so it's gonna be way more purple. So yeah, this has zero ink in it, but it just kind of like makes it look interesting in my opinion. Purple extra is something that you can't do with just the pen. And since it gets more um, warm toned when I do this, sometimes I like to use it where I would have blush. And then another kind of cool thing you can do is if you have like a Posca pen or a white gel pen, you kind of use that to fix any teeny tiny mistakes. Like if you want this tendril bang to be even more obvious, you can kind of just go around like that. That's for more like fine little details that you want to be white that you maybe went over a bit too much. Another cool place might be here. So that's my plan for today. Fill this spread with some pen sketches. Another cool thing about pen is that you can kind of do it pretty quickly. So if you're just feeling a little down about how empty your sketchbook has been lately, you can knock out a whole spread pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm gonna keep sketching. I literally have no idea what I wanna draw. So we'll just kind of see what happens. Usually starts with a circle. <laughs> and normally kind of transforms into a girl. So I'm kind of like blocking out basic shapes of a something. Let me make the bun a little smaller. Make it kind of like a pin a four prairie kind of dress with some billowy sleeves with a bow on the back and ruffles where I'm putting them probably down here something cool about drawing with pen is you can't really um undo so you kind of just have to go along with the flow and I think that teaches you to kind of use mistakes and kind of implement them into something and I think it helps me kind of like create funky shapes and then go with it I'm like more risk taking because I'm like it's just a pen sketch <laughs> right it's just for me to have fun see I'm kind of like darkening up the lines on the smaller bun to make the bigger one kind of fade out and be less noticeable as I push a little harder the lines that I like better. Now she does have a big head, but it's pen. Can't fix that. With a boot. Figure out what the bottom of a foot looks like. Not a common angle for me. I like that one. This one's a bit more confusing. <laughs> now, this definitely needs a little uh, tone variation. So I'm thinking the dress that's underneath the pinafore might be a good candidate for that. We'll just add a little bit of patching there. This will make the pinafore pop too. Aye. Nice, simple, not much to it. Might add a little circle. But yeah, feel free to experiment with the shapes you use and everything. See if you can find anything fun in there. I like to draw little tiny guys with this too. Just kind of find the lines in there. Now she definitely needs some legs. We'll add some of those. <laughs> I think I will grab this color of those blender for this just to make it a little more pink. And the more ink that's there, the more um, pink's gonna spread into the white areas because there's just more pigment there to snag. And a little glitter. A little tip when you're sketching a special... Yes, exactly. So a little tip when you are like filling a spread that I like to do is to just every time you sketch something, do it a different size. That way, when you get to the end of the spread, there's just going to be so many different things to look at. Like right now I did like one that filled the whole height of the sketchbook. Then I got these two little guys. I got a couple scribbles in there. And now I feel like this area is calling to me to be filled with one specific thing. And then maybe some more small ones here. And then something big like right right here with something small there. I don't know, this is kind of how my brain kind of like visualizes it. It's a little different every time. I definitely have some like go-to varieties, but I don't know. Some people have asked how to make your spreads more interesting and that would, that would be what I suggest. But yeah, I want to fill something here. I'm thinking a face. I also would really like to do like a building or something. That sounds interesting to me. Yeah, be very light with any guidelines. And just mark where everything goes, some ear. Those definitely don't really look lined up. Black out those shapes. We're a little lopsided. This side. Now this side looks a little short. So we'll move this one over too. Can only do so much with a pen though. So try and uh, not go over things too much. Eyebrows. Sometimes I like to line them up with like the nostril. Helps me kind of center it sometimes. Slowly building it up. You can see I don't, I try not to go from super light to super dark too quickly, but build up like around the whole sketch slowly. And then when I'm definitely sure about something, I'll darken it up. And that is a good way to go about it when you're uh, sketching with pencil too. Only really missing hair. <laughs> <laughs> what are we thinking? Maybe a nice short bob with bangs. Ooh, that's calling me. I'm thinking bangs that like end right here that are at a slight angle, but curly. I'm gonna draw in some like shapes that are kind of unruly, I guess. All right, and like a little bob. Being very quick and in the shape, not too worried about this line here. I like to just pretend it's not there for the most part. There are certain times when you probably should take it into consideration, but I'm just sketching, so we're fine. Turn the neck to the side a bit. Play with that symmetry. 
Okay, so I've got the hair blacked out. Now we could probably start going in and uh, actually drawing in the hair. I like the kind of shape and how it fills the uh, composition, but now it's time to kind of think about how it would actually look. If it was more real. Now there is a lot happening here, but I'm planning on making the hair really dark, so I'm not too worried about that. If something like that happens to you, you should probably consider making one of those things very dark. And it'll solve the problem. Kind of just fill it in almost completely. Filling this in slowly. I don't go too dark too fast because I don't want to lose some of those cool hairlines. Also try not to fill in any of the gaps, which is like behind the hair and not full of hair. Another way to make it look darker is to add cross hatching. So like what I've been doing is hatching. Cross hatching is when you do it the other direction. It's gonna automatically look darker because you're filling in more of that white space. And once it's all kind of filled in with that first layer, I'll probably go over a lot of spots to add even more depth. Like say here, for instance. In here. Oh, we could add like a little uh, highlight up there by omitting some of the hatching. Fill that in. Grab that Pasca. Oh, I went too early. That's probably gonna turn pink. Oh well. Just darken up those lines that I liked. Add some hair strands. That always makes it look kind of fun. Hey! So you see like the variation and I'm creating this like cool straight line. So if I wanted to take that as inspiration, I could draw something small right here. It's a concept. <laughs> All right, I think we'll do two more miniature ones. I'm thinking a building or something. Maybe a little house with a roof, preferably. I do like roofs, maybe a chimney. All right, this is lacking a lot of individuality. <laughs> what can I do? Maybe a lookout tower? Not many houses have those. I wanted to make this look a lot more man-made or like they built it up on top with like a satellite so they can broadcast their conspiracy theories. The garage. Trees, maybe. Now you can see here I'm a little less comfortable, so I'm like, I have a tendency to push harder quicker, which only makes things look even less good. <laughs> so trust me, I do it too. It takes time and patience. Hey, what do we think? <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny. I might grab this still in the background. Can I do another one up here? Another building? I don't really talk when I'm drawing buildings because it takes so much more brain power <laughs> because I am not experienced. What about like a beach? Maybe a railing, and then there's like sand. Maybe some water's kind of coming up here to where the steps are. Fence up here too. Maybe a gazebo in the back. And this is supposed to be like water. I'm going to grab this and kind of cover in. Actually, I think I could get away with adding a little bit of blue to make it look like water. And then a little Pasca to add like some foam. Maybe a different blue for like the sky or actually like a little green for the water and then use that for the... Now while we're here, let's make everything green. <laughs> I do like the way that looks though, it's cute. So oh, the Pasky in them. We lost some of that. I like that. Or next, I kind of alluded that I would fill this hoe shape. So I think that's what we'll do next. Side profile here. Eyeball. What about like a braid? like girls hairs cur curly hairs i go with a wiggly technique it's not really uh tugging on the inspiration <laughs> do the same thing we've done with the rest okay now you come with something nice and big and fun i would really like to draw like something where you can actually see the shoulders see how this one's like mostly just head <laughs> let's go pointing this direction since these poses all kind of look that direction and so does this one we're gonna start with like a rectangle so this is like the torso then we'll need like legs I don't have a lot of room for a face, which I would usually put here, so I'm gonna have to pull it down. Kind of make it more scrunched. Maybe turn the head. I'm kind of just letting the sketchbook control me. Let me put these arms backwards. This arm could maybe come this way. It would kind of fill in that space. You could also give her like really big hair that kind of fills that in. This foot, I feel like it's gonna be here somewhere. And this one, maybe pull it back just a little more. Okay, the more I'm adding to it, the less I like it. Which means I probably need to like kind of look at it. I would erase all of this if it was a pencil, but it's not. So this is time for me to figure this out. I'm thinking the torso's too long. So maybe bringing this up here. I also might want to bring this leg up more. Then definitely demonstrates that this leg is way too long. Yeah, it's this that's an issue. Oh, we could change it completely. Just go with like a crisscross applesauce. You know what? I'm gonna take a little detour and work on the face. Cause I don't think I plan on changing that. And if the legs don't turn out, I might just hide them and keep the face. You know what we could also do? Bring this shoulder further forward and then block that out with this arm. Oh yeah, this is all getting a bit busy. This might call for desperate measures, which is actually really cool because 
because then I can show you something I like to do when the pen sketch doesn't turn out. But we're not quite there yet. I can still use this area to kind of figure out what I do want. Let's keep going then. Find the lines that I do want in here. Little foot. Ooh, that looks nice. Where'd that come from? I figured she's like sitting on something that's like here. Maybe it doesn't make all that much sense. Leave me be. Work on this arm back here. Which is further in the distance, so we can probably get away with kind of pushing it backwards. Which is again gonna pull it away from all these extra lines. This leg though. It's gonna kind of come up more like this and then come more straight down probably. I think I am salvaging this. I would probably prefer to have this like in a bit more and have this higher like this. I think that would just look better, but I'll take it. It's a pen sketch. Sometimes they'll be a little stiff. I'm gonna draw some kind of sneaker with like a big tongue. Maybe a sock in there. <laughs> hey! Do you see how like these lines are less obvious? Like obviously they're there. They didn't disappear. But because I'm like darkening up these other lines, your eye is smart enough to kind of figure out what to look at. You can use this maybe as her hair. Very uh, heavy and thick if that's the case. Maybe color in the pants a little. Make them even more obvious that these are the real legs. Don't look at those fake legs. These are the real legs. <laughs> Got a little cross hand maybe make it even more dark little star since those seem to be showing up everywhere I'm gonna take this and color over all the skin to just kind of separate it from the clothes make it look a little pinker Ooh, that did make a difference look at that now the hair though maybe if I just kind of go over these lines find the good good ones Got a little shading and depth this might be a good candidate for the Posca pen. Kind of blending in with her pants. So it needs to be a little lighter. And also kind of go around the edge of those dark lines to separate them from the other lines. <laughs> the unimportant ones, you know? Kind of find the hair strands. Probably everywhere should have a little bit of color. That's not like the paper. Going to add a little bit of blush. Hopefully this will pick it up. I can't believe how much that actually looks like kind of a skin tone just by dragging the purple around. It warms it up so much. Now, I feel like I redeemed that one. It leaves us with quite a bit more space left still. What should we do with that? Honestly, I had a lot of fun with the scrunched up pose, so I would like to continue that. Maybe even try that pose again. Basically, it's heads kind of tilted, torso, knee, foot. This arm, I guess, is coming down this way. And then this arm is kind of coming around like this and then back up. Let's try and find the face in there. This knee. Probably come about that far. Followed by a foot. Kind of did a pose like this recently for that using every single gray art supply video. But there it is again. Hope you're not sick of it. I'll do space ones again because that's simple and it'll be out of the way and won't interact with much of the rest of the pose. Hey, I like that. See, drawing smaller is also easier because little mistakes aren't as apparent. So they're also more fun in that way too. I wonder if I could fit something into this shape. Someone like kneeling here. Not very expressive, I feel like. You might say there's a very distinct lack of boys in this spread, in which I would address that comment by saying, yes, yes, there is. <laughs> Look a little hand. Push this little piece back. But I kind of like the angles that we're finding in these feet. Hey, there's a good face too. Hey, I'm on a roll. Let's not mess this up. Do straight hair. Have I done anything with straight hair? I mean, I guess technically that's a little straight. I don't know. Dig it, I dig it. I like that. Can I make like a circle and make it more obvious? Look at this one. <laughs> I don't really want to go over it. I kind of like the sketchiness of it. And because it is so much lighter than the rest, it kind of stands out in that way by being less standy outy. That's called contrast. <laughs> All right, we're down to this last. Wait, oh, smidge. Should we go strong or just like make a bloodfish? You know, we could add a bloodfish over here. And a fin and another fin. <laughs> Now I kind of want to just fill in a lot of the space here. This would be a really good candidate, but it's got a line there. Should I try? Nice and light. A little difficult. No, wait, I think I got it. Yeah, I think that works. You can kind of make that out. Excuse me, one more. All right, still have the space. Another building? Trees? We're just going to draw something. I'm going to let whatever happens happen. So it looks like it's a person. Ooh, look at that. Someone just standing there. Maybe hands on, uh, ooh, crossed arms. Those are tricky. Block out the shape. Maybe cock the head a little. Get that hip out for a little more attitude. Uh oh, this looks like it could be a boy. Do I let that happen? I think I might. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Also kind of just using like sharper edges. I don't know why, I just tend to do that when I decide it's a dude. <laughs> Face, kind of come in here close. How about Atisha? 
it's clearly too small. <laughs> Widen the leg a little for the pant. And then there'll be some kind of shoe. This head's already big and this big hair is only gonna make it worse, but there you go. It's a man. All right, the time's up, I guess. Well, not time's up, but paper's up. I should tell you what the little trick was though that I seem to have avoided, which I'm glad I did. What I like to do is grab a sticky note and uh, say you wanted to fix like this eye. Tape that down there. And sometimes you can actually still see through it a little, but either way, you kind of just draw on top and try and correct your mistake. And if you decide you really like it, I recommend actually adding just a teeny bit of like a glue stick or something and gluing down the rest. You can also cut it to the right shape or you can draw over everything, give everything another shot. And if it's something you wanted to draw again, I mean, you can just do that for fun, right? Oh, another thing you can do, grab a Posca, make it even more interesting. I might try cutting. Ooh, scissors are out of reach, maybe not. Did I just show you how lazy I am? I'll get the scissors. Ah, there we go. I just had to like sit up a smidge. So we're gonna cut along here. There it is. Yeah, that's what I would have done. So it's kind of a way of erasing, but without an eraser, you're still using a pen and it's, I don't know, it's just kind of cool. And a different way to do things, change it up. What kind of glue, I think I've used, I really like, it's a little like glue tool. So you can kind of like go under here, create a little glue spot and then boop. And that should stay because it'll be inside the sketchbook. So it'll be totally fine. And it adds like that cool, like, I don't know, texture to your sketchbook because it's like the shadow and everything. I don't know. It's just, it's just cool. I like it. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope if you've never tried to sketch with a pen, you give it a little shot. Try not to get too frustrated on your first attempt though. Just keep it nearby in case you feel like doodling and see how it impacts your style over time and just see what happens. I personally find it really, really fun and it's one of my go to's for uh, filling a sketchbook spread. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!